on? Yes. Yeah. Well, we, the whole idea of this travel club was to bring amazing speakers, amazing opportunities to you all. Uh, and that's really, you know, my wife and I, you know, we travel a great deal, and we just want to bring our type of experiences to you. And by, we have a lot of really great opportunities for you. Amanda did an amazing job. We, we had the, up until this coming to Trilogy, we never really did these, this type of travel. And we're, we're no fans. We kind of enjoy that. You know, let other, other people take our bags. <laughs> I've always been a planner, and uh, my company is in everything. Doing, and it's nice to have other people do that. So, you know, let them do, pick, up, you know, pick you up, and take you places, and just plan everything, and just sit back and enjoy. So that's part of what we're doing. Now, um, um, one second. <coughs> just want to cover up a couple other details. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I, as you, most of you have been on the website, the MTL, and the Facebook pages. We try to post a lot of really interesting opportunities, ideas, and not just about trips per se, but how to travel, or when you go on airplanes, what do you do, what, what do you drink, what do you eat, where do you stay? So I'm hoping, I, I'm watching everybody every day go on to the various sites, and it's fascinating to see sometimes they get 40, 50, 60 hits on these sites. But it's fun to see that, that you seem to be all interested in some of the ideas of traveling with us. Um, many of you are going to be taking that wine train that we put together for next week. And that was sort of a fun thing to do. I saw that wine train last year. You know, my wife, we, we, were the, we had one vineyard in California, so we really like wine. And we did the wine train in Napa. And when I saw the wine train here in North Carolina, I said, that was a fun thing to do. I little did I expect how many of you wine are out there <laughs> want to join us. Um, I put together on the, uh, I, the folks that are going on to that trip, I, I send email out. There's a lot of really interesting things to do beside drinking wine. Um, there, there is a synchronous uh, firefly. Anybody ever seen that? You know what that is? You can watch uh, butterfly, not butterfly, fireflies have sex. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Only two months, two weeks out of every year, only in that region, butterflies mate, on uh, fireflies mate. And the challenge to get into that is you actually have to go to a lottery. And there's, there's so many people want to see this, rain or shine, you go out there and make a good thing. And as I've always said women are always brighter than men, uh, fireflies, women are brighter. You know, uh, fireflies are brighter than the guys. Uh, but they all do it together. It's really what so they call synchronous fireflies. So that's one of the experiences you'll be get an opportunity to do on off the train trip. <laughs> Other thing, there's if you, anybody, any Tucker fans, whatever, there's going to be, she's, she's there at the Harris um, Casino. So she's doing that. So it's a lot of interesting things. On the email that I sent out to you, there's links, there's all kinds of hotels both booking.com, there's hotel.com. I also put on fire tour and some other places. There's a lot of experiences out there. There's a lot of waterfalls you can be able to get in. There's breweries, there's wineries. There's just so much activity. I had no person, I had no idea about that. So that's, that's an interesting trip that we'll be going in June 4th. We have a, a, a meeting Tuesday night for final payment uh, on that. And it was, as I said in my email, it was overwhelming. We now have 102 slots. I can't believe it. 102 of you guys like drink, drink wine. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, with that trip going on there, and then, you know, we're, the intent was not for us to put trips together. But, you know, we, we're sharing things that my wife and I like to do. And a few months, a few, what, about six weeks ago, I went down to Savannah for the very first time. Savannah's quite, a, quite an interesting city for lots of reasons. And while we were there, uh, we had a chance to go over to the university there, a SCAD, let's say right this time. Thank you. Always correct me, I'm always wrong. Uh, and they're fascinating for lots of reasons. What I didn't realize is they have a, an incredible movie uh, set. They're one of the second largest movie sets in the country. And I think I have it here. Um, this is a film festival. Let me see what I do. Let me see. 
I have a little video that I picked up this morning that I think is interesting. This tells Georgia offers movie makers all the instruments for a successful production, stunning locations, state-of-the-art facilities, and top-tier creative talent. And it all comes together right here at Gad Savannah Film Studios. Let's take a look. This 22,000 square foot facility serves not only the $6.1 billion film industry in Georgia, but also for all of our students. Here in the lobby, students are met with a warm and welcoming space, including even custom-made furniture. It's high-tech, it's beautiful, and it wouldn't be scabbed without art everywhere. A beautiful rope sculpture by Trish Anderson, insulation mixed media work by Eduardo Ortiz, and projection mapping by Will Penny. Our outside production clients have their own interests to Savannah Film Studios, as everything they need is provided for them. Editing suites, a recording studio, a screening room, conference rooms, office spaces, and a makeup and wardrobe room. And it wouldn't be complete without a fabulous green room. Here I am at beautiful scab low cost. It's a dream. Actually, I'm still here at Savannah Film Studios. This is our green screen room. It's one of three sound stages at Savannah Film Studios. Here we have a hike wall, a mole fan, a panther, and Fisher dollies. And we've got the big guy over there, the techno gym. SCAD is the only university that has an in-house casting office. Our students and alumni get cast in all sorts of productions in Georgia and beyond. Like Haley Carter, who scored a plum role in the new Netflix original series, Godless. And Deron Horton, starring opposite Kevin Dillon in the upcoming indie film, Dirt. Here I am behind the scenes with our improv group. They're actually preparing for a performance of Saturday Night Live. These are performing arts, motion media, sound design, film and television talents. They're all working together to create this great performance right here in Studio A, Savannah Film Studios. So when I looked at that opportunity, not only is, is Savannah a really cool, great town, one of the only town I, in history I didn't know, they were the only town that wasn't burnt down during the Civil War. The, the mayor went out there and negotiated with the generals. He said, come to my town, enjoy your meal, and don't burn us. And he was like, oh, that was kind of fun. So I thought this would be an opportunity. They, they, they do a film festival uh, every year in October. However, with COVID, they haven't done that for two years. So this year, they're gonna do it again. And it's a five-day festival, it's a red carpet event that you go for the red carpet, you can take different classes, you can, you can meet the stars, the movie uh, actors, you can you participate in classes if you like, uh, you can go to the events, the theaters, and so on. So I thought, you know, we're, we're just coming back from another trip, but my wife actually agreed to go there. So we're gonna go uh, to Savannah, for that time to enjoy both the city and the opportunity. So if anybody is interested in doing that, I can try to put something together. So just, just an idea. <coughs> the other thing that I'm curious about is I have speakers coming in each one of the next meetings. And I hope everybody, I, I know Amanda did an amazing job. <laughs> she did, thank you. And I'm hoping you're appreciating the speakers that I have been bring coming in. But I don't want this to be just a lecture. I want this, it's all about your group. I'm just leading the group, but it's, it's, the group is gonna grow and expand and intertwine with everybody by you participating. So a couple of things I'd like to propose. One is uh, someone asked me about doing a theme dinner. So I already spoke to the chef here and we can put together a special theme dinner. 
The question is, what theme would you like? <laughs> do we want to do an Ethiopian theme? We can go out and roast grow like oats. Uh, we can do an Italian dinner, but I don't want to step on Tom's, uh, you know, Tom's toes, the Italian club. But it's really up to you. So I would love you to sort of send me notes about what you think to have a theme that can be. And we'll work with the chefs here and put together a special meal. The other thing that I'd like to see is we get a lot of people well traveled, you know, more than we have. And it would be fun if you guys we can put together sort of a seminar that maybe some people went to Africa, some people love Italy, some people love Antarctica or whatever. Yeah, let's have a meeting where you guys can share with the community your experiences, what what you like, both the good, the bad, and the ugly on that. Then we've also had opportunities, people question about how, they, how do you pack? You know, we have to have a motor coach with us just to pick, take our bags. We never pack light. Some people have one bag. So it would be fun to understand how you pack, what do you use, you know, what type of luggage you have, how do you get to the airport, how do you manage different things. So those are just some topics. If anybody else has any suggestions for the club, we're all eager. So with that, I'll open up to the audience. Any questions? Amanda, any questions for Amanda or myself? You know, you, here's your time. Yes? Uh, when is the Balloon Festival um, that she was talking about in Arizona? When, when is the second one? It's October. And it's two, I think it's a two week period, usually end of September, beginning of October. Next year. Yeah. It's pretty much, I think, sold out this year. Um, of course, people are making up from the past few years. So, the community will be promoting it next year. Oh, okay. So, I know everyone sees pictures. How many of you have been to the Albuquerque International Balloon Festival? You see pictures, you go, yeah, yeah, right. I attended a few years ago, and I counted, and I was sober. I counted 730 <laughs> balloons in the air at one time. So, it is, it is like being a kid at Christmas under the Christmas tree, you used to look up and blur your eyes to see all the lights. That's what it is. But it does start early in the morning. Well, there are three five different Five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> no, it is not like seven o'clock early in the morning. <laughs> That's true. There's, you know, early, you've got midday, and then coming back for the, the glow where they are on the ground, but they light up. Amanda, what airline do you use domestically and internationally? Uh, it depends on your gateway that you're flying out of. So it's, it's but all, you know, your Delta, American, United, and so forth. And Japan. Also, sure yep, 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 you know, and they work with all the partners and so forth. So really it depends on the size of, if it's a group or individual, and then it, you know, <coughs> um, what, what is it like, routing and so forth. But all, all regular airlines and their partners. So if you do it individual, uh, we will arrange the air. Yes. Not getting to the airport is the only issue. When Amanda and I were speaking earlier, I asked her to bring up the Cuba trip. Uh, yeah. That's something that when we were in San Antonio, I got it, I became aware of that. I'm interested personally. I just think you know, we travel to many places. It's a very interesting trip that I saw. And I want to tell you, it's not expensive. You know, there's all kinds of, of group. The Tau group is, we love to have tra It's up there in price. You can get some really bargain. These guys offer a really good value. And to her point, that the Cuba trip was you headquartered in Nevada, I think it's a five day trip, okay. yeah, five or six days, and you, you spoke out from there. The, what's interesting, what I was told, is you can't, as an American, you just can't fly to this with Cuba. However, you can go as an educational visa, I believe it is. So you have to fly to Miami, take a course, or do something. <laughs> <laughs> we have a license. So it's just like a little different paperwork kind of thing. So but you have to travel with someone that has a, a license to go to Cuba. So, uh, But it's a very fascinating destination. 
the old cars and just the history and the architecture. And really, it used to be the Monte Carlo of the East. So it is fascinating, actually. Trevor is interested in that, too. But uh, a great destination to go. And as far as packing, uh, if anyone doesn't use those packing cubes, <laughs> I swear by packing cubes. I love <laughs> well, that's kind of what I had to say about this morning. Any other questions? Any comments? Or yes. Um, the uh, tours that they do includes the air. If you want to go a week early and stay a week late, can that be worked out with no penalty or? Uh, it's called a deviation, and it certainly can be done. There's a little extra fee for adjusting the air and so forth. But yes. Thank you everybody for coming. I hope you're